Good evening. Welcome to the QCIS channel. On this channel is Daily Dose, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. My name is Leon Jones. I got a good one for you tonight. I want to continue with the surveying series. And tonight, I want to talk about the list of equipment that's used in surveying. Now, some of the equipment that you might be familiar with would be a steel tape, which they used to call a chain in the background, the Adelite or dumpy level, but the EDM, EDM is electronic distance measurement, total station, GPS. See, one good thing about surveying most people look at it as if you just go out in the field and you're staking out houses. You're putting hubs in the ground. It's a little bit more than that. Basically, when you survey, you're locating different points, different data in the land. So you can put it in a computer. You have coordinates associated with surveying. Now, Back in the 18th century, many of them had monuments that were stones. You had different systems, the meets and bounds system. You had the public land surveying system, which deals with townships and ranges. However, with all that being said, what kinds of instruments are used in land survey. What I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Surveying instruments and their uses. Now, what are surveying instruments and how do you use them? Well, when we talk about surveying instruments, basically they're used to assist in measuring land and when you measure land, you measure vertical and horizontal distances. And when you have excavated material, you measure the volume. And what a land sur surveyor does with the surveying instruments, he or she uses them to make precise measurements of the Earth's surface. Now, based on the determination of measurements in the field. Now, let me repeat that again. Based on the determining measurements in the field, questionnaires or research of legal instruments and data analysis in the support of planning, designing, and estimation and establishing of property boundaries, what you do with the information when you establish property boundaries, you draw them on the map with relevant details. Now, what is on a property, it could be an easement, it could be a road, it could be a utility. Now, as we introduced surveying, now we're gonna introduce the instruments. Now instruments is an often used word in surveying, but it can mean different things to different people. For example, some people refer to field books as instruments. Now, technically, a field book is more like what we call instrumentation. That is all of your survey equipment or survey instrument put together in one place for future reference. Other people refer to handheld computers as surveying instruments, but they might be thinking about something else altogether. Now, a handheld computer is not an instrument per se, but it can be useful when doing certain kinds of calculations and running certain kinds of computations. Now, what would be an example of a handheld computer? Well, a calculator. The olden days of surveying, HP had a calculator called the uh, uh, HP 11C. Now, HP is human packer, and one thing about HP calculators, they used a lot of Polish logic. What else could be used for certain kinds of computations? 
your cell phone, your laptop. Yes, people are taking laptops in the field now. Laptops have software that you can make the calculations. Let me give you an example. Software such as Wolfpack, you can use that to do least squares and close traverses. And you can figure out the error of closure with these squares. Now, with all that being said, basically, these are the instruments used for land surveying. Some uses are as follows. Again, I'm going to give you the instruments used for measurement of land. And here are some of them. A, instruments used for linear measurements chain or tape arrow pegs, ranging rods, offset rods, plumb bob, optical square, line ranger. Instruments used for angular measurements, prismic compass, surveyor's compass. Instruments used in vertical measurements, leveling staff, the satellite, don't be level. And of course, they're instruments used for area. Now, brief uses of surveying instruments. Survey instruments, again, it's basically equipment used to measure land, take angles and volume of land and areas of land. So surveying equipments are mostly used for quantity surveying, mine surveying, topographical surveying, route surveying, hydrographic surveying, and basically land surveying, you can say boundary surveying or property line surveying. So when we put everything together, and this is gonna be a, a piggyback off of the video I did a couple of days ago when we dealt with types of surveying. So we're gonna get right back into some types of surveying. Like what is land surveying? Land surveying is the detailed study or inspection as by gathering information through observations, measurements in the field, questionnaires or research of legal instruments and data analysis in the support of planning, designing and establishing of property boundaries and drawn on map with relevant details. You know that field book that was being talked about? Basically take that out and you put all your information, like your sketches, your angles that you measure, your measurements that you took, it's in your field book, and that field book is legal documentation. What is quantity surveying? Now, I didn't talk about that when I dealt with types of surveying. Now, if you are dealing with construction, you deal with quantities. So basically a quantity surveyor is it's in the construction industry, that person has expert knowledge on construction costs and contracts. Qualified professional quantity surveyors are known as chartered surveyors in the UK and certified quantity surveyors in Australia and other countries. Now, what they do, they might go out and let's say they're going to do a road where they could go out and use their knowledge and estimate the quantity. Like, what's the area? How much asphalt are you gonna need per area? How much earth are you gonna use for excavation? That, that's what we call dealing with quantities. Now, again, here's one that you're probably familiar with. As I talked about it, what is topographical surveying? Well, we call them topos, but a topographical survey is based on the determining the relative locations of points, places on the Earth's surface by measuring horizontal distances, differences in elevations, and of course, directions. Topos, place or topographical maps give the locations of places, observable features, they serve on base maps. And we deal with hydrographic survey. Well, that is the survey of physical features present underwater. It's the science of measuring all factors beneath water that affect all the marine activities like dredging, 
marine constructions, offshore drilling, etc. Hydrographic surveying is mainly conducted under authority concerns. And we go to mine surveying. It's the practice of determining the relative positions of points on or beneath the surface of the earth by direct or indirect measurements of distance, direction, and elevation. Now, this is where we're going to get into some of the types of surveying instruments. Now, one thing you must understand, surveying as it's known today has gotten more technological with photogrammetry and drones and robotic instruments. In the past, most of the instruments that were used, you had some EDMs, which that stands for electronic distance measurement, taping arrows, plumb bobs. You had theato lights. You had dumpy levels. You had measuring wheels. Well, you're going to see some of that right now. Some of the instruments that are used in surveying, and I've already talked about it, measuring tapes, measuring wheel, surveying chains, Arrow, peg, ranging rods, offset rods, lumbar, cross staff, optical square, prism square, sight square, tripod, plane table, alliday, plumbing fork, spirit level, trough compass, drawing paper, instruments for direct leveling, distance meter, bipod, plumb laser. Dumpy level, Y level, reversible level, tilting level, leveling staff, prismatic compass, surveyor's compass, the Adelite, total station, GPS, GNSS, 3D scanner, and of course, drones. Now, here are some of the major instruments that you're going to use in surveying. And the big one is a total station. I used a total station before when the TopCon series came out. Now, basically, a total station is an electronic or optical instrument used in modern surveying and building construction that uses electronic transit theatolite in conjunction with an electronic distance meter, which is known as an EDM. It is also integrated with a microprocessor electronic data collector and storage system. The instrument is used to measure sloping distance of objects to the instrument, horizontal angles and vertical angles. So the, basically, the microprocessor unit enables for computation of data collected for further calculations for the horizontal distances, the coordinates of a point, and the reduced level of a point. So basically, when you go out and shoot a point, you might use some software like Kogel software. Point is then taken from the data collected and downloaded to a computer system. Now, again, I'm already ahead of myself. So once the data is collected from the total station, it can be downloaded into computers or laptops for further processing of information. Total stations are mainly used by land surveyors and civil engineers either to record features as in a graphical survey or to set out features such as roads, houses, or boundaries. They are also used by archaeologists to record excavations and by police, crime scene investigations, private accidents, reconstructionists, and insurance companies to take measurements of scenes. Now, again, there's all kinds of information, applications of, and this is the total station, applications of total station and surveying, surprising uses of a total station, high target total stations, and other uses in surveying of total stations. Now, something else that's very popular is the auto level or the dumpy level. And basically, this instrument is used by builders. It's a leveling instrument or automatic level. It's basically an optical instrument used to establish or verify points 
in the same horizontal plane. It is used in surveying and building with a vertical staff to measure height distances and to transfer, measure, and set heights. Again, you want to learn more about the auto level? Check out the importance of using auto level in surveying and the uses of the auto level in surveying. Next, we're going to talk about the theatre light. Now, when we deal with the theatre light, it's a basic surveying instrument of unknown origin, but going back to the 16th century, English mathematician Leonard Diggs, it is used to measure horizontal and vertical angles. In its modern form, it consists of a telescope mounted to swivel both horizontally and vertically. Now, a theatolite is a precision instrument used for measuring angles in the horizontal and vertical planes. Theatolites are basically used mainly for surveying applications and have been adapted for specialized purposes in the fields like spectrology and rocket launch technology. And as you know, instruments have gotten more and more modern, so the theatolite is no exception. So when we deal with a modern theatolite, it consists of a movable telescope mounted within two perpendicular axes, the horizontal and uh, triunion axis or trunion axis and the vertical axis. So basically when the telescope is pointed at a target object, the angle of each of these axes can be measured with great position. Now, something that you are hearing about today, it's been around with the military. You might hear the term GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. And it's basically a space-based satellite navigation system that provides location and time information in all weather conditions anywhere on or near the Earth where there is an unobstructed line of sight to four or more GPS satellites. The system provides critical capabilities to military, civil, and commercial users around the world. And it is maintained by the United States government and is freely accessible to anyone with a GPS receiver. Again, the GPS is a satellite-based navigation system made up of 24 satellites placed in orbit by the US Department of Defense. Now, again, I mentioned it before, and I'll say it again. GPS was originally intended for military applications, but in the 1980s, the government made the system available for civilian use. Why? Because GPS works in any weather condition anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day. And let me tell you this, unlike AutoCAD software, and we're going to get into different softwares used for civil engineering and surveying. There are no subscription fees or setup charges to use GPS. Again, there are no subscription fees or setup charges to use GPS. Now to use AutoCAD as a subscription. We'll get into that later on. One of my favorites, photogrammetry and the drone. Now, when we deal with photogrammetry, it's basically aerial photography. It is the art and science of making accurate measurements by means of aerial photography. And under aerial photography, you're going to have analog photogrammetry. And that's basically when you use hard copy photos and films. Digital images, or we call it digital photogrammetry. And we have something in the form of remote sensing imagery and i want to tell you something let's go back to the history when we deal with rsi remote sensing imagery or aerial photographs again aerial photographs were the first form of remote sensing imagery now there's something you need to know if you're flying above an area you want to survey well if you look down on the road, they look like white crosses. Those are the targets. 
you go out on the road, you see it's a cross, not an X, it's a cross. That's what they're using in photogrammetry. Now, types of van vantage points to acquire photographs. Again, types of vantage points to acquire photographs. Vertical vantage points, low oblique vantage points, and high oblique vantage points. Now, something else, the optical square. Well, the optical square uses a pentaprism to reflect or retract or reflect the beam. It is a optical square that uses a pentaprism to reflect and reflect the beam or sighting 90 degrees. It is used in pairs in surveying and in a singular block in metrology. Go over that again, an optical square. Uh, you see some of those out there, but basically, you see a lot of electronics out there. You have prisms out there, but the optical square, it uses a pentaprism to reflect and refract a beam or sighting 90 degrees. It is used in pairs in surveying and in a singular block in metrology. The plum bob laser, or known as a dot plum laser, type of laser that projects, uh, that projects a small dot into a surface. These dots are used for transferring points from wall to wall or ceiling to floor. It is a handy tool for making sure that the wall is plumb or even installing wall to wall. We'll see too much. Basically, we want to see if a wall is really plumb. This is a good instrument, but you use a level as well. But again, a dot plumb laser, it's a type of laser that projects a small dot onto a surface. And these dots are used to transfer points from wall to wall, from ceiling to floor. And basically, this is an instrument that is used to make sure that a wall is plumb. This is a construction instrument. An LDM, a laser distance meter. It's based on a principle of reflection of a laser beam. To measure a distance, the device emits a pulse of laser in the direction of an object, for example, a wall. So the time necessary for the laser beam to get to the object and go back determines the measurement of the distance. Now, in consideration of the speed of light, distances can be defined precisely with this kind of laser. So basically, laser distance meters can also accumulate independently to calculate surfaces and, of course, volumes. The prismatic compass, basically that's a navigational piece of equipment, or let me say it this way. A prismatic compass is a navigation and surveying instrument, which is extensively used to find out the bearing of the transversing and included angles between them, waypoints, and endpoint of the closure and direction. Now, when we're out here surveying today, we use a prism. Let's call it an optical survey prism. Why? Because they're specially designed, they're specially designed retro reflector, specifically a corner reflector that is used to reflect the electronic distance measurement. It's, it's a beam from a total station. As a survey prism reflects the EDM beam back to its source with both a wide angle of incidence and with high precision. So basically, when I'm running an electronic total station, I'm going to have somebody hold a prism out there. And when I go ahead and I shoot that prism in the electronic total station, you'll see a red light. Well, that Light is really a beam 
it's hitting the prism and reflecting back to the total station, which gives you the distance. That's why we don't use a lot of tapes. Because when you use steel tapes, let's say if a tape stops at a 100 foot increment, well, you gotta put an arrow, it's almost like breaking tape. You gotta put an arrow, start again, we'll measure another 100 feet with an arrow, a taping arrow. Well, the accuracy is gonna be less. In other words, when you use regular steel tapes, you have a higher probability of error, where if you use the prism with the electronic data measurement or distance measurement, you don't have to worry about as much error. There will be error, but not as much. And you get the leveling staff, or we call it a leveling rod rods out there or your California, your Frisco rod. But basically your leveling rod is basically, it, it's a graduated feet and meter on an aluminum rod used with a leveling instrument to determine the distance and height between points or heights of points above the vertical datum. It cannot be used without a leveling instrument. So again, when I say there are rods out there, yes, there are different rods out there, the Frisco rod, they're all graduated, they all have numbers, but with the Frisco and the other rods, you don't need a leveling instrument. Now, basically, with this rod, you need a leveling staff or a leveling instrument. And basically, you can see a lot of these instruments used out there in the field when the, a contractor's out there building a building. You hear that beep, 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 beep. Well, when you hear that, that's the level. That means that what you're putting down is level. And it comes from this leveling rod. And what it's doing is measuring the height between points. Something else, the prism pole. Now, uh, you might think, oh, well, what, what do we need a prism pole for? Well, you know, I've used the prism pole for different things. Now, if you look at the colors, they're red and white. And I believe each red and white indicator is a foot. This one looks like it's almost four feet. Well, something you need to know. A prism pole can be used to measure the elevation of a specific ground point by using a sight level as well, which is important if you want to get accurate results. You can find that a prism pole and a variety, you can find a survey pole in a variety of materials from metal and fiberglass to a variety of composites. Now, like I said, I've used a prism pole to measure something and I didn't need a leveling type of instrument, but you can use a sight level. It's just like I've used a two foot and four foot smart level. I had a, I had a two foot and I need to measure four feet, take two feet, measure, mark from my mark, measure over another two feet, that'll give me a distance. Those are some shortcuts that you can use in construction when you don't have the tape. Bipods. You find a collection of aluminum survey bipods, carbon fiber bipods, quick release bipods, or bipods, and more. Again, with bipods, you can find a collection of aluminum survey bipods, carbon fiber bipods, quick release bipods, and more. Easy level adjustment for better precision and accuracy. And you notice as we've gotten down the list, they're starting to talk more about accuracy and precision. Measuring wheel. I actually have one of these in the in the car. Now, when you measure, you hit that tick, 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 tick. Well, it's usually measuring inches measures feet, and you can get quantities, linear feet. And that's basically what a measuring wheel is used for. Now, 
a measuring wheel, also known as the surveyor's wheel, or click wheel, or um, perambular, or uh, perambulator, perambulator, odometer, way wiser, or trundle wheel is used to measure distances. Again, the measuring wheel, also known as the surveyor's wheel. Click wheel, parabulator, odometer, way wiser, trundle wheel, it's basically used to measure distances. As an inspector, I use that measuring wheel. And what that tick, 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 tick is, it's counter, it's counting mechanisms. Because measuring wheels, again, measuring wheels have a counting mechanism that counts the number of rotations and uses the circumference of the wheel to calculate the distance covered. And then a tripod. Tripod is very, very, very important. A tripod, they used to have a quad pod. It had four legs. We had the instrument where you had four screws. That's four legs. But a tripod is a portable three-legged frame or stand used as a platform for supporting the weight and maintaining the stability of some other object. It could be a level. It could be your electronic dis distance measurement. It could be your theatolite. But it's basically, the tripod is basically used to give stability to other survey instruments, again, such as an auto level and total station. And again, like I said, when it comes to any field of surveying, having the right equipment, instrument is essential, whether you are measuring angles, distances, or elevations. Having the best instrument for the job will ensure speedy and accurate measurements now, for every application. Also, the ease of use of an instrument is an essential factor which plays a quick and a quick role when it comes to accurate measurements. The use of an instrument is an essential factor which plays a role quick and accurate measurements. And what you have heard here on this presentation is a listing of instruments that are used in surveying. Very important that you understand the equipment that you are using. Because when we deal with surveying today, you have to be more precise and more accurate. And today they have a lot more software that can help you correct errors of closures when it comes to traverses, errors of measurement, um, better tools for making more accurate measurements such as your robotic instruments, upgraded total stations. You can take the data that you collect in the field and download it to a computer and even create a plat after you've done all the field work. So basically, to deal with surveying today, we're dealing with taking the information from the field and utilizing it in the office to make sure we have surveys that are accurate and have precision. And that completes this topic on listing of instruments used for surveying. Like what I just presented, just comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some social and political content, don't forget to check out my main channel, the 411 Talk Zone radio show, also here on YouTube. Now, if you cannot find the QCIS channel or the 411 Talk Zone radio show on YouTube, Find both of those channels on my Twitter page. Now, because it's an educational channel, you can also find 
the QCIS channel on my LinkedIn page. And once again, thank you for listening to this content that deals with, that is dealt with the instruments used in surveying from the QCIS channel. On this channel, a daily dose, science, technology, engineering, and math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful, gracious evening.